Why do we like the film look? And how can we achieve the film look without using a film camera? Let's find out in this video. Ok, velkommen til testvisning. Eh, veldig hyggelig at dere har lyst til å komme og se på. Kan bare sette i gang. Yes, hva, hva tenker dere? For skarpt. Det er et eller annet med den digitale skarpheten som bare treffer meg ikke. Det viktigste er å få frem historien. Må altså. det være så fucking skarp? Altså 8K er jo litt i overkant, kanskje? Det er jo, eller tenk litt på storyen for eksempel da, for det er jo en veldig personlig historie og sånn. Uh, du kan kjøre litt mer grain. Når jeg tenkte grain så tenker jeg liksom på riskåren og hvordan det... Da får du plutselig en film som er ordentlig cinematic. Du tenker grain for å ha en filmlukk. Du kan ha et cinematic bilde uten grain. Åh gud, du skjønner ingenting. Altså herregud. Hjelp meg da. Hva faen? Jeg skjønner ikke hva jeg snakker om. Føler ikke det er så viktig med grain, altså. Du kan jo så, grade det det en, en film ting, uten det å det gjøre det mye mindre skarpt og ligge på ja. altså, grain, liksom. Du vil ha filmatic. Film. Matic. Filmatic. Forbanna ungdom. Det kan ikke en drit om film. Filmlukk. Cinematic. Filmatic. Hold kjeft. Dere trenger opplæring. I think we need to look at the history of filmmaking and why the film look or cinematic or filmatic or whatever you want to call it <laughs> is a term we use. Before the digital cameras were invented, we shot films and pictures on film rolls. As early as 1969, researchers invented the first digital camera. However, it wasn't before the early 2000s that digital photo cameras became more mainstream among consumers. Ah, my first camera was the Canon MVX150i. I loved it for its big screen and optical zoom. It even had 320 times digital zoom. Wow! <laughs> okay, and only for the past decade, digital cinema cameras became more used in bigger movie productions. And then the heated You're discussion wrong. started. Film. 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 Could a digital camera actually produce something that could be called a film? film. Some hated the digital look, and some praised its easy and cost-effective way of producing films, or videos, depending what you call it. For example, directors such as Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino and Steven Spielberg are shooting their movies on analog film, while Michael Bay and James Cameron have converted to shoot more digital. Even though we all, with a few exceptions of course, shoot digital, the film era still heavily affects how we make our videos or films today. Okay, first off, the frame rate. Cinema movies today are often shot in 24 frames per second. Also the digital ones. How come? Because that's the frame rate they shot at when they were shot on film. 24 frames per second was found to be the lowest frame rate you could shoot at while still getting an illusion of a fluid motion. Of course, a higher frame rate would make it even more fluid, but because film stock was expensive, they wanted to avoid using too much of it. Now, however, there would be no problem shooting a Hollywood film digitally at 60 frames per second. Peter Jackson chose to shoot his film The Hobbit at 48 frames per second, double as usual. And this choice got mixed reception. People weren't used to these high frame rates and it didn't feel cinematic, if we can use that word. So the same goes with the shutter angle. Today, we mostly use a 180 degrees shutter angle or also called 1 48th of a second if you shoot with 24 fps. This also dates back to the film days. Cinema film cameras often use rotary shutters. They needed to expose the film, close the shutter, move the film to create a new frame before exposing it again. And when closed, the shutter would have a mirror leading the light up to a prism viewfinder for the crew to see what is being filmed. 180 degrees shutter angle was convenient. 
so that the film would get a decent amount of light. The viewfinder would see the same as the film and it would be enough time to move the film in between exposures. We got used to seeing this shutter speed in big movies and that's why we see it as the most cinematic today. And now the depth of field. Film stocks had a much less light sensitivity, ISO, compared to top modern digital sensors. As such, fast lenses with big apertures were needed to let in enough light, creating a shallow depth of field. This shallow depth of field is today seen as cinematic, and no manners is not called shallow depth of field, which I usually said on this YouTube channel. Depth of field. Yes, it's a bit hard for Norwegian to say, but yeah, I actually managed to say LSD screen as well. Yeah, it's not that, it's LCD screen. Okay. We can see that the term cinematic is largely based on what we are used to seeing in the cinema. This is also why we perceive the film look as more cinematic. So if you can achieve the same shutter angle, the same depth of field and the same frame rate on a digital camera, why choose to film on an expensive film camera? Well, I think it's more to it than just that. You have a color tone that's different, you have grain and yeah, you even have the sharpness. It's actually, in fact, it's more organic and not 100% perfect. And that brings me to the next question. Does the way the film look look affect our story? Whatever we choose to do with our sound or video, it will affect the story in our film, such as blue color grading, which can tell us it's cold. Close-ups can make it easier to show human emotions and scary music make things creepy. Will the small details in film stock, like the grain, color and sharpness of a film stock, affect the story? I think that in overall it might do so. How it does it might be subjective, but I believe that the true film look gives us a feeling of roughness. A roughness that can give us a feeling of imperfection, in a way, and tell that something is more alive and less artificial. The different types of film roles we shoot on can give us different types of nostalgia and connections to the old days. Just like we did when making a music video for the song Ocean by Jayan. We made some of the digital shots look like old film to tell that the main character was looking back when she was young. So, if you want a real film look, why don't you just use film? Well, it's pretty expensive. A 400 feet 35mm film will last you less than 5 minutes and cost over $300 on B&H. In addition, you have to develop the film. So, if you want that look but can't afford using a film camera, then what? The Film Convert Nitrate is a product you didn't know you wanted! Do you have troubles with your digital look? Well, don't despair my friend. Hey, 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 you won't miss this opportunity, I tell you. Film Convert you can get to Premiere or you can get it to DaVinci Resolve mm -hmm. uh, or Final Cut. Mm -hmm. And what Film Convert is trying to do is to simulate or emulate a real film stock. And here you get quite a few options. So first you have to choose your camera. Mm. Because what's so nice about Film Convert is that they have different camera profiles for pretty much all the most popular cameras. They even have like Apple iPhone yeah. <laughs> profiles and... Do they have Samsung as well? Yay! Uh, and they keep adding camera profiles. So the, I saw they just added the S1H, which is nice yeah, because yeah. we have it. Yeah. Because all of these are tailored to each camera, you can easily match your cameras using Film Convert uh, if you add the same film stock to them. And they should look pretty similar. Yeah, which was this shot on? This is Eva. This is the Eva one, yeah. So uh, you can choose Panasonic EVA 1 and also you can even choose uh, the settings that you used when you shot uh, the film. So mm. this was shot in Vlog, right? It's yeah. a flat image. Yeah. And boom, you see we already have a quite nice image. So here you can choose all these different uh, film stocks. Some of them are black and white and some of them are color. Also, it's important to choose your film size. So this is by default 35 millimeter, which is a uh, full frame, which is quite, you know, a uh, subtle grain. But if you go down to 16 millimeter, or like if you go down to eight millimeter, you can see you get um, a lot more grain by default because that is how that film looked. You know, mm. when you film on an eight millimeter film, it's a lot of grain. 
Just to let you know, YouTube compresses the videos a lot and remove a lot of grain. So you might not see the grain as we see it now. If you want to access the video uncompressed, we added it in our secret discussion forum, which you can access through our memberships page. You can just press join below. Uh, the exposure temperature tint is like you're used to with lumetri color or whatever you're grading in. Um, and then you have the grain and this has a lot more control now in the nitrate version. Now we can actually choose how the grain is affecting different parts of your image, which is quite cool. Yeah. So here you see on this curve here, there's no grain in, in the shadows or the highlights, but there's a little bit more in the midtones. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you want grain in the shadows, we can just increase this part of the curve is a little bit too much. Yeah, <laughs> too so. much. <laughs> uh, but usually it's quite nice to not have that much grain in the in the shadows and highlights. So this curve is quite nice, yeah. but you, you have the possibility to, to change it. There is a grain effect in Premiere Pro. So why not just add that? The grain uh, effect in Premiere, it doesn't create the same grain. You, know, you have different types of grain. You have uh, when you shoot in high ISO on the digital camera, you get one certain type of grain, which doesn't look like film. It's yeah, more like a noise. A ugly noise. Yeah. yeah. And the same with the grain in Premiere. It's not the same as the film convert. You can see that the whole image is kind of like a little bit softer as well. Because by default it chooses to soften a bit. Um, I think on 35 millimeter full frame it doesn't. Yeah. But then when you go down to like eight millimeter yeah. it softens by default. Yeah. So yeah. Well, then why add softness? Don't you want a sharp image? But you know, the softness, it does something with the image. On this shot, we have her in focus and the background is blurry because of the shell that the depth of field. So mm -hmm. she gets separated from the background, even though we add some softness. And um, in addition to these kind of film settings, you have more uh, normal controls that are, you're used to seeing in, in these kind of uh, programs, like uh, the color wheels and the curves and levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, this Cur is curves is a new one from uh, the last version. It didn't have curves. Yeah, I love curves. That's my watch. <laughs> yeah, not, doesn't look like <laughs> we <that>. used it before. <laughs> uh, it's just a very nice way to add contrast. Of course, when you use the film convert nitrate, you can always use other effects as well. So if you want to have, let's say, you want her face to bright brighten up her face a little bit, you can always add an effect like the, the Luma curve and then adjust uh, the skin tones and then add the mask to only affect the, the, the skin. And you can even track in Premiere Pro so it follows her face. That's quite a nice feature. So this was the EVA and you know it's, it's, a, it's a nice camera so of course it's easier to, to color grade. It has more mm -hmm. dynamic range than the GH4 and the colors looks better uh, from before. So let's have a look at the GH4. Yeah, here's a shot from the camera. If you haven't seen this film, it's a crowdfunded film on our channel. Sci-fi movies about cameras. So it is shot with a GH4, and I believe it's the Cine like D. So let's say in this shot, this was a, maybe a, a little bit underexposed. Yeah. And when, when we now gain the exposure a bit, of course, you will get uh, some a little bit of noise, which is not good noise. But then adding the, the film stock and adding the grain from the film stock, you kind of hide the digital uh, grain a bit. For some reason, grain, film grain is completely acceptable, but digital noise is not mm. at all in the cinema world. Uh, you mentioned to me that often the green parts of the, the digital video often look a bit too greenish or saturated. Yeah, that's the most kind of obvious difference in color. In digital, you have a lot more green. Basically, you have a more pure green, maybe more like how we see it while the film will have more of a yellowish uh, green. This actually was the big discussion we had when, we made, when uh, I made a feature film in 2011. We made a horse film that was going to be sh uh, screened all over Norway in cinemas. Yep. And the guy who color graded it, the film, he said that we should push down the green. It mm -hmm. was shot with a red uh, digital camera. And he said, let's push down the green. I said to him, no, I want a lot of green because it's, it's, it's nature. I, mean, I wanted to show horses in the nature and yeah. like all that feeling. And I, as a director, said, I, I want some more green. And so it's like, like maybe because I wasn't that used to the green look on film that, than they were. Yeah, because maybe. they were older than me. And we actually had to export three different types of the intro of the film to test uh, screen it on the cinema yeah. to see actually which green did we like the most? So we find out like a middle way there, I believe. Yeah. yeah. 
Og det er sånn film fungerer. There's no doubt that in today's society, everything goes really fast. You have to deliver your film quickly to your client because there's a lot of competition out there. And getting the film look quickly, I think Film Convert Nitrate is something you should try. There's a free trial out on their homepage. And if you want to buy Film Convert, use the code ANDIAX or the link in the description. You will get an additional 10% discount, so 30% discount in total. And if you want to see more filmmaking videos from us, press the subscribe button below. And we also created a membership page. Press the join button to see what that is. Uh, you can then support the channel and get ex access to exclusive videos. Like some things from the Making a Film Company series, which we never released. So check it out and we'll see you again soon. Hadura! By the way, if you like the music you are listening to now, it's from our music packs. I added a link in the description where you can access our music packs.